this is an approach that we've been using in the market. And it's really helped get um, get our sellers more money and get our buyers into mm. a property with less money. So rather than taking all of your money and running, what would you think of deferring some of that taxation instead of taking the huge tax hit? Why don't you invest with mm -hmm. us for a couple of years? Yeah. And then you can get your money out in a couple of years and pay way less in taxes. Yeah, and, and just look, what if I could give you the same securities you'd have with a vendor take back, but on the partnership and you get some additional securities. It's actually a win. So like, oh, so it's actually a win for me if you stop yes. making payments. Yeah, that's how we And I think it. that's the best way to do it, right? <laughs> it's going to save you a right, bunch of money. Right, right. So that's an easy one. I Welcome back to REI Hot Seat. Andrew Hines with Jacob Campanero here. That's me. That's you. All right, we're talking creative deal structure today because uh, Jake is not one to shy away from that. And uh, he gets that done with his clients, being a commercial multifamily realtor. Sometimes, especially in the current climate with interest rates where mm -hmm. they are, not every deal works. And sometimes creativity is what gets it done. It has to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff's got to sell. Um, yeah. So I thought something we can talk about today um, is uh, like seller seller reinvestment or seller partnerships yeah like um, i like, know you have an example of this i, don't I have know how much you can two, tell two <laughs> examples of this right now and, and it's, just give it's, a high level what that is yeah so it's it's very very simple it's when the seller of the property basically becomes your jv partner okay right or becomes an investor so it sells you not the whole thing you guys become like tenants in common on the property either or that or they become an investor in the project yeah, so like right. in the corporation, so yeah, like LP, shares. GP, right? If you're doing okay. a GP, maybe they become the LP partner, or they, or it's, or it's a shareholder so agreement, and they both become partners. On is that. this potentially a way to to save some of the land transfer tax for him, or it's fully mm. chain, it's fully trading hands? It's fully trading hands. Okay. Um. And and you're right. Like you could just do it as a JV and buy shares, or, and or then buy a percentage of ownership, and buy a percentage of ownership, yeah. and then yeah, there is going to be land transfer savings as well as capital gain yeah. savings. Especially if you're doing it in yeah. the G or in Toronto yeah. proper, you're saving two land transfer. Correct land now, transfer, ugh, two land transfer taxes. Yeah, and so yeah. the where they reinvest their capital though does mitigate or it defers uh, capital gain. Oh, okay. Right? It's like so a VTB because, because as part of the transaction, it gets reinvested. It, it defers capital yeah, gain. It doesn't so, trade hands, right? So so that's similar to the pitch of a VTB. Hey, how about, you know, do you really want to take that that hit this year on capital gains mm -hmm. and pay all those taxes? Mm -hmm. Why not defer some of that to next year and the year after and the year after? Mm -hmm. Spread it around. That's that's actually probably in a lot of sellers' best interest. hundred percent, right? And, and yeah. listen, like if you're the obviously the path of least resistance is a VTB. Right, it's more well known. A lot of lawyers are familiar with it. Sellers mm -hmm. are familiar with it. Um, and so, if you can do a VTB, do a VTB. But where does this? Why, why does a seller reinvestment come in rather than a VTB? And it's when the debt services is an issue, right? So what we're seeing is a lot of a lot of properties are under rented, and with the interest rates in the market, it just absolutely decimates your your valuation. Right. Well, and a lot of the, the banks don't like VTBs, right? They're going to be able. They don't way, want them in seconds. Yeah, they don't want seconds. more okay with especially an equity in this market, partner, right? Right, especially in this market. So then, rather than doing a VTB, what we've been doing is structuring, structuring the reinvestment very similar to a VTB. Where so I would come buy something off of you, Andrew. You're the seller. I come in and I say, okay, Andrew, like I'm going to buy your place, but I can I can max that if I max out my first position mortgage, the bank's going to give me sixty five percent loan to value, right? Mm -hmm. Realistically, that's not great, right? People these days are looking for 70%, 85% yeah. as much as possible. Um, plus, I got to raise capital or I got to put my own capital into renovations because your your building is under rented and, mm -hmm. and it has uh, deferred maintenance. So on top of my down payment, I also got to come in with 500K of capital to do the renos um, and it just kills the investment. My ROI is right. not there. So rather than that, I say, okay, I can't do the VTB because I need to maximize my first. However, why don't you come in as an investor, right? Right on closing, invest with me in the property. Mm -hmm. And again, you can do that as a GP structure, right? So you like can, as a general partnership, limited partner. Yeah. So like you're going to become yeah. the limited partner. So that yeah. mitigates some of the risk for you. Yeah. For for those that are wondering, like limit the limited partner is just like the equity owner not supposed to be doing the work, and then the general partner is like sort of the liability Correct. partner that's supposed to do all the work and be responsible. So I really like yeah. structuring it in that way because mm -hmm. it really does set your lines, right? It's hey, yeah. you're selling the building to me. I'm going to pay you a return just like a yeah. VTB. The security is that you're going to be an LP. So I'm personally guaranteeing 
your re- your return on investment. And there's other tricks and things we can do to also give you additional security. Yeah. Is that um, how that works? Like you're yeah. guaranteeing the LP's return? I guess that it's all how you write it. It's how like you write you, it. You it's can completely write it how you way. write it. I could just yeah. say, I'm going to give you a dollar a month and that's it and walk yeah. away. Like so it's, you can write it. Would you do that? You would You would guarantee a return to them? I guess that's kind of a nice way for them. You to, almost have to, right? Like, yeah. Because like, come on, are you really going to, like, I'm a complete stranger. I'm coming in to buy your property. Are you going to be like, sure, Jake? Yeah, I know well, nothing I about you. I feel like, like this is pretty hard to do with anybody unless you sort of build some rapport. There has to be yeah. rapport. There has to be track record. So we've been doing this with clients who have multiple doors, who who, who have track record of completing these projects. Um, on top of that, yeah, personal guarantees. We'll give them, right? So we'll give a personal guarantee. Um, in some... Like against the return that you're expecting. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. okay, okay. Yeah. That'll help um, get a deal done. For sure. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, there's other ways you can do like, um, like you can have it where it registers as debt if you don't make your payments or something like that. So there's- right, yeah. So I'm I'm familiar with that where you basically read, uh, you basically have all the mortgage paperwork filled out, yeah. but it doesn't get registered, and the reason it doesn't is because that would be a breach of contract with the first mortgage lender. Yeah. So you just have it sitting there just in case there's ever a you know, a, a default on the first more or something like that on, yeah. the, on the payment for that second mortgage. And then it gets yeah. registered and then all bets are off. And again, like yeah. I always say, speak with your lawyer about all this stuff, but, yeah. um, and, and, and this is completely lawyer heavy negotiations. Like mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer to be drafting this stuff, but it's, well, an, you come up with the terms, but then you let the lawyers, hundred percent. Right? right. So, um, so it's something we've, we've been dabbling with to try to get these deals done. Um, We've had great success and we've had some deals where the sellers just can't get their head around it. They say, nope, like, I don't like it. Um, I want to, I want a VTB or nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. And in those cases, we got to try to something to do something else. But uh, this is an approach that we've been using in the market. And it's really helped get, um, get our sellers more money and get our buyers mm-hmm. into a property with less money. Right. right? And so it's, 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 I love out. creative finance. Like, it's like people aren't that creative in Canada from what I've seen. Like, we yeah. need to bring more of the creativity that a lot of these Americans do up here because, like, just thinking outside of the box and just coming up with a solution like that, not a lot of realtors are going to think of that. Not a yeah. lot of buyers are going to think of yeah. that. Like, that's like, you got to go, go in with the problem solving. There's a way. And I'm going to see what others don't see. And that's when you start making big money. That's when you start creating huge equity plays Mm -hmm. because you see what others don't. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and half the challenge is like if you're dealing with another realtor is like getting that other realtor to understand what you're trying to do. Right. Like sometimes that's a challenge, right? Never mind the seller. There's just got to be good rapport between you and the other realtor if you're working with them, right? right? That's it. So you got to build those, build those rapports in the industry. I like the if, you know, if I could give you a solution that accomplished this, this, and this, would you want to hear about it? Yeah. Sure. Like, let's, how do you mean, yeah. you know? And then you, okay, well, let's start with the first thing. Yeah. And then you just kind of work your way through it. Well, that's it, right? And I always yeah. draw back to everybody, because like the biggest issue is always like security. Where's my security? How am I getting my money out? What happens if you do this? What happens if this happens? A lot of ifs, right? And I always think, okay, well, you were okay giving me a vendor take back. So let's walk through the worst case scenario of what happens if I don't pay, pay with a vendor take on back. a vendor take back. So then you compare it to what if you get, what if you become a partner? And what if you become a, a partner? What's the worst case scenario if you become a partner? whether that's GPLP, shareholder agreement, whatever it is. And I say, what if I could give you the same securities you'd have with a vendor take back, but on the partnership and you get some additional securities, Mm -hmm. right? Being in a second position VTB, I find that really risky because if I, if I'm the buyer and I stop paying my mortgage, the bank is good. The first position mortgage is most likely going to force power power sale. sale. Yeah. If there's money left over, then you you'll get it. You'll, yeah. You being the second mortgage holder will get it, right? And Whereas, that's why you want you want to be in a position where you've got good good equity in there if you're the second mortgage lender. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times what, what in a situation like that, the second mortgage lender is the one that keeps up the first mortgage to avoid the power of sale. And then the second mortgage lender yeah. power of sales it. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Correct, right? So now to you protect look at, themselves. Now right? you look at a partnership. Yeah. So if we're a JV... And you're the seller and you invested with me and I'm on I'm on the mortgage or we're both on the mortgage, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Um, I almost see more security in that because then it's like, Andrew, stop ma- making payments. Okay, I'll just step in, start making the payments. We'll yeah. have something in our contract that automatically terminates yeah. your your interest. right to have anything, your interest yeah, in it. Yeah, yeah. And now- That's brilliant. And now I just take That's it brilliant. over. That's very, very interesting. So uh, one of the things, very comparable angle uh, that I've been sort of studying in the States is is the whole subject to thing where you can buy somebody's property subject yep. to the existing yep. mortgage. Yep. And sometimes the the sellers, because they're obviously a little worried, like what happens if you stop making payments? Like this is my credit, like I'm still on that mortgage. 
And the guy that I was learning this from, he would write it in their contract that if he ever stopped doing that, they could just take the property back and they get all the equity pay down that he's done yep. since he bought yep. it. So it's actually a win. So like, oh, so it's actually a win for me if you stop yes. making payments. Yeah, that's how we And I think it. that's the best way to do it, right? Because then you're showing them that, hey, this is yeah. actually a better route. You're turning it, well, it's the whole Alex Mer- uh, Hermosi thing where you like make, a, make an offer so good that people would be stupid to say no to it. Yeah. And that's kind of doing that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I'm going to make it so good, like, so, such a no-brainer for you that yeah. you, you'd be silly not to I'm say I'm going to give yes. you money. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you get the property back. Mm-hmm. And you get that paid down in uh, paid down principal, yeah. Plus the money you originally got from me and the property, go sell it again and do it again. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, like you can just do it again. Right? Yeah. And then listen, like obviously, we're talking worst case scenarios, right? Like I wouldn't even recommend a client goes into it, even a VTB if we don't trust who the buyer is. Yeah, yeah. You, you know really what I mean? Know. Like, you got to do your due diligence. This is the second level of protection. First mm. level of protection is do your due diligence on that buyer. Yeah. Right. Who are, who are they? How many properties have they done this with? Right. Mm. What's their net worth? What's their equity? How, like, you know, if mm. things do go wrong, what, what, what are my recourses here? Once yeah. you've figured all that out and you go, yeah, I'm comfortable with this. Then you can kind of look at, right. How do you write the contract to be, to be protective? Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of thing where like, like just to circle back, like most, most realtors don't know this kind of thing which is it's pretty cool like this is the kind of thing that you're getting into like what would you say led you to do this or think like this like where'd you learn that from yeah well we talked about vtbs all the time right? yeah vtbs so are obviously super common yeah and yeah. so basically with with the current market right now nothing's debt servicing and so yeah. never mind if the bank wants a second mortgage on it or not it's yeah. just it's not even going to work with a second mortgage it's so not in other words it's going to be cash negative for the right yeah right so we just started thinking, you know, just put our heads together or put my head together. And I just said, well, what do we do? Like, how do we get around this? Mm-hmm. Right. If we can't register the mortgage because the bank doesn't want it for se- per se, then what else can we do? Well, we can register yeah. a mortgage on a different property. But what if that buyer doesn't have a different property? Right. Yeah. It or what if everything's property. leveraged? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or what if their bank doesn't let them yeah. to register the mortgage on the other property? Yeah. What is it just a dead deal? Mm-hmm. No. Like let's figure no, it out. No, there's right? there's so, a, there's a solution there. There's a, there's usually a solution there. You just got to get creative. I think it's just yeah, it just came about through like solution driven yeah. thought and 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 yeah, not letting deals die. Like hey, what else can we possibly do? Yeah, and just so people know, so typically with commercial lenders for like a multifamily deal, they'll say no second mortgages, and they do an annual review, so they'll find out if there's a second mortgage. They could pull like yep. if they see something on your financial statements, they could pull a title search. They they could figure it out. Yep. And then you're in you're in breach of contract if you do that because there's a no second mortgage clause. Typically, like you might find one that doesn't. But even if they allow second mortgages, you have to debt service. So they have that 1.2 to 1 debt coverage that you need to have. So meaning your operating income needs to be at least 1.2 times your debt service. Mm-hmm. And if you don't meet that, uh, then you're not within the, the scope and terms of your agreement with the bank. So the second you throw that second mortgage on there with a big payment, you're now no longer covering that ratio, typically, unless you have a really high cash flow property. And uh, you're, you're in breach and they might call the loan or they might say, we're not going to give you any new loans. There, there's a whole bunch of implications to that. So you just got to be careful and speak with your bank about it, of course. Some people do it. I, I've known many people who have just thrown a second mortgage on anyway, but they get in hot water with the bank and then they have yeah. And it's not until they fix it and get rid of it that they're back on good terms with the bank. Yeah, but it even might ruin the relationship with the it bank might. as well, right? And the next time yeah. you go to get a yeah, they don't trust you. They don't want. We don't like that. Yeah, yeah, we don't really want to deal with you. We know what you did in the past, so uh, you just gotta you gotta know yeah. you're taking that risk. Like it might be a fixable thing. Oh, sorry, we had to do it in the short term because something came up. Yep. But we're getting rid of it right away. Like you might be able to talk through that, but you know, it's, it's some people say it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. No. Nope. Ah. Uh, <laughs> depends depends what field you're playing in, yeah, right? yeah exactly like, it all depends on you and how you feel comfortable speaking with your lender so yeah. anyways all right anything For else sure. we wanted to, to cover on the top no it's short and sweet man like i just yeah. i thought that was a really fun topic we're going through three deals where we're doing this right now so so to recap it's it's basically instead of offering vendor take back you're offering hey seller what would you think of staying a partner on the property Yep. So it's rather than taking all of your money and running, what would you think of deferring some of that taxation instead of taking the huge tax hit? Why don't you invest with mm-hmm. us for a couple of years? Yeah. And then you can get your money out in a couple of years and pay way less in taxes. Yeah, and, and just look at it as if you were yeah. going to go close on a property and you had to go raise money anyhow, Yeah, you're doing exactly you're the doing same that. thing. You're raising and buying at the same time. Actually, yeah. here's how I would sell it. You, you think of pain points because sales is all about solving pain points. So how I would do it 
is I would say, gee, Mr. Seller, like, wow, that's going to be a pretty big tax hit, huh? Yeah. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you're going to be what? Like half $1.5 million gain on this. Yeah. So, you know, quarter of that to, to CRA, that sucks. Uh, you know, oh shit. I never thought about that. <laughs> and, hey, well, actually I have an idea. How, how, how would you feel if I could save you a whole bunch of tax? Well, what do you mean? Boom. There's your yeah. opening. Yeah. Because you could just say, well, you know, you're going to pay so much in taxes because it's all in one year. If you yeah. can spread that out, you can decrease the amount, the marginal tax rate. Yeah. And you can even just tax plan. Tax plan, yeah. Right? Like, hey, you know, you're going to be hit with a big tax bill this year. Maybe we take a little bit less out of the corp, right? And, like, you just be able to, like, plan yeah. out your... your, your oh, you, yeah, you yeah. in terms of returns to them once yeah, you do that. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is, like, even have, like, a redemption, like a buyout period. Each yeah. year they get bought out a certain yeah. amount. Like, then you could yeah. do that where it's it's a strategic amount that puts them in a lower marginal yeah. tax rate so that they're not... They're not paying as much for money. sure. And then you can go down the whole road of like yeah. return of capital versus return on capital. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> this is where we hire the accountants. You yeah. just, just want to yeah. understand it in concept. We're always going to use lawyers. We're always going to use accountants for this type of thing. Um, yeah. But we just, you just want to be able to get in there and propose the solution yeah. in the general terms and then let the accountants and lawyers that's get it, in there. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, right? Like it's, it's, I always like when the sellers go talk to their lawyers and accountants, mm -hmm. right? I say that. I go, guys, go speak with your team. Like, I'm not trying to sell you on something where I need you to sign today. Yeah, because you know when they yeah. talk to their accountant, they're going to tell them it's going to be a monster hit on tax. Yeah. Right? And Lawyers are 50-50. They might yeah. kill deals, but accountants yeah. usually, nine out of 10 times, I've had the accountant come back yeah. and go, give the VTB. Yeah, right? like, yeah, yeah. You're gonna, it's going to save you. A right, bunch of money. right, right. So that's an easy one. I agree. Yeah, lawyers depends on who you get. Like lawyers are in the business of advising people not to take risk yeah. because it just it's just liability to them yeah. if they tell you to invest in something. Yeah, and I think yeah. if the client comes in and talks to the lawyer, the lawyer should then find a way to mitigate risk. Yeah, right. Sure. And that's what we're trying to do sure. here with this whole with this yeah. whole version of, of what we're doing. Cool. Yeah. All right. So Jake has just put on a little bit of a show of uh, why people work with him. And I, I think he does a really great job. I've been watching him for years. So uh, if you'd like to work with Jake and his team, the way to do it is through the link below uh, in the description here. And if you fill out the form there, somebody from Jake's team would get in touch. And you eventually it. you'll end up speaking with Jake in that yep. process. So um, yeah, highly, uh, highly encourage you to speak to Jake if you got questions on this type of thing, because uh, I don't know anybody who knows it better. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, Andrew. Thank you. All right. Okay, guys, until next week. Thanks a lot for watching.